Hey everybody, welcome to Skills Build Training YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to give you a detailed tutorial about Mern Stack development. How you can develop your application in Mern Stack. I'm going to show you that how you can work with React, how you can work with Node.js, how you can work with Express.js, and how you can work with MongoDB. So my name is Talha and this channel is all about showing you how to become a highly paid IT pro fast. So let's get started. What is MERN? MERN is the acronym for MongoDB, Express.js, React.js, Node.js. It is a combination of JavaScript based technologies to build advanced web applications. You could ask, is MERN a full stack? MERN is a full stack. If you do not know what full stack is, full stack development includes pretty much any project where you are working. You are working on both the front and the back end of a site or app at the same time. MERN has three layered architectural pattern. First is the front end layer. Then we have the application layer. And then we have the database layer. If we talk about the front end layer, it consists of React.js. React.js is a front end library used for building user interfaces. If we talk about the application layer, then it consists of Express.js and Node.js. If we talk about Express.js, it is a backend web application framework for Node.js. If we talk about Node.js, it is a backend JavaScript runtime environment. And finally, the database layer that consists of the database MongoDB. MongoDB is a NoSQL document-oriented database program. Now, let's talk about the MERN architecture in detail. The MERN architecture allows you to easily construct a three-tier architecture that is front-end, back-end, and the database. And you do that by using JavaScript and JSON entirely. Let's talk about the top layer, which is a front end or client side. It consists of React.js. The top layer of the MERN stack is React.js, the declarative JavaScript framework for creating dynamic client side applications in HTML. React lets you build up complex interfaces through simple components. You can connect them to data on your backend server and render them as HTML. React's strong suite is handling stateful data-driven interfaces with minimal code and minimal pain. And it has all the bells and whistles you would expect from a modern web framework. Great support for forms, error handling, events, lists, and much more. Now let's talk about Express.js and Node.js server-side framework. Running inside a Node.js server, Express.js claims itself as a fast, unopinionated, minimalist web framework for Node.js and that it is indeed exactly what it claims itself to be. Express.js has powerful models for URL routing and handling HTTP requests and responses. By making GET, POST, or XML HTTP requests from your React.js frontend, you can connect to Express.js functions that power your application. Those functions then use MongoDB's Node.js drivers either through callbacks for using promises to access 
and update data in your MongoDB database. Now let's talk about the third layer in detail, MongoDB database layer. If your application stores any data, such as user profiles, contents, uh, comments, uploads, events, etc., then you are going to want a database that's just as easy to work with as React, Express, and Node, right? That's where MongoDB comes in. JSON documents created in your React.js frontend can be sent to the Express.js server, where they can be processed and stored directly in MongoDB for later retrieval. If you're building in the cloud, for example, you'll want to look at Atlas. If you are building in the cloud, you'll want to look at Atlas. And we'll talk about Atlas later in this video. The question is, why choose the MERN stack? Let's start with MongoDB. The document database at the root of the MERN stack. MongoDB was designed to store JSON data natively. It technically uses a binary version of JSON called BSON. And MongoDB also handles everything from its command line interface to its query language. The query language that is MQL or MongoDB query language. This language is built on JSON and JavaScript. MongoDB works extremely well with Node.js and makes storing, manipulating, and representing JSON data at every tier of your application incredibly easy. For cloud-native applications, MongoDB Atlas makes it even easier by giving you an auto-scaling MongoDB cluster on the cloud provider of your choice. And it is as easy as a few button clicks. Express.js and React.js, as we have talked about that they are the backend and the frontend technologies, they make the JavaScript applications MERN full stack. Express.js is a server-side application framework that wraps HTTP requests and responses and makes it easy to map URLs to server-side functions. React.js is a front-end JavaScript framework for building interactive user interfaces in HTML and communicating with a remote server. The combination means that JSON data flows naturally from front to back, making it fast to build on and reasonably simple to debug applications. In addition to that, you only have to know one programming language and the JSON document structure to understand the whole system. And guess what that one language is? JavaScript. MERN is the stack of choice for today's web developers looking to move quickly, particularly for those with React.js experience. MERN can be used to build any web stack and it's ideally suited for cases that are JSON heavy, cloud native, and that have dynamic web interfaces. A few examples might be to do applications, uh, workflow management, interactive forums, or whatever else you can dream of. In this tutorial, we're going to build a school management system using MERN stack and we're going to perform some CRUD operations. CRUD stands for C for create, R for read, U for update, and D for delete. We will create some form fields in the React.js to create a student user, save the student's data in the form of JSON and store it in the database. One great thing is that from React to Express and Node to MongoDB, everything is in harmony because everything understands and works with JSON. We'll also read or get the student's list from the database and show it on the web page in the form of a table. 
We'll also update the student's data and delete a student from the database. We'll use Visual Studio Code in this video to demonstrate the whole process of setting up the merge stack and the development of the management system. So let's begin and set up our project. Okay, so now let's jump into my computer and let's go ahead and let's do some practical work. I'm going to be using Visual Studio Code, so I recommend that you go ahead and you install it if you already do not have it. So I'll write here Visual Studio Code. Here you can see. I'll click on it. It would open up. What I'm going to do is that first, I'm going to create a folder where I want to set up all my projects and I'm going to give it a name and then I'm going to open it up in my Visual Studio. Okay, so now let's go ahead and let's try to create a directory or a folder and then we'll import it in the Visual Studio. I am going to create this directory on my desktop. So I will name it as Mern Project. Okay. So I hit enter and now I'm going to import this folder inside the Visual Studio. So I'll just drag it, open the Visual Studio and I'll leave it. Here you can see that now we have a main project file or folder which is Mern Project and now I'm going to create everything inside of this folder. So inside this main project folder, I'm going to create more directories. So I'm going to be needing two directories, client side and the server side. So we are going to work on the projects which have front end and back end involved. And then we're going to connect a database with it. And then we're going to try to process data through. Okay. So let's go ahead and before creating the client and server directories, the only thing that you require is Node.js. So if you do not have Node.js installed on your system, um, then you have to install it. But there is a way to check if you have Node.js or not. So what you are going to do that in order to check if the Node.js is installed or not, you would go to the terminal, click on it. And here click on new terminal when you will click on new terminal here you can run the command like node and then space hyphen V if you already have node installed it is going to give you the version if you do not have it would tell you that you do not have any node version or it would give you an error so if I hit enter here you can see that it says that I have the node version installed which is essentially 14.16.0 okay so the thing is that if you do not have node version you can install it by going to www.node.org and then you can download it and install it directly so now once you have installed the node now you are going to go to your main directory or folder which is essentially Mern project and here I am going to create two directories or two folders. Uh, one is going to be the client side and the other is going to be the server side. So I'm going to name it as client and then I'm going to create another folder which I'm going to call as server. So here you can see that now we have two directories, one is client and another is server. So the client side is the front end. So here we need to have React.js installed. So in order to install React.js into the client side, I'm going to use this terminal. So what I'm going to do that is I'm going to split the terminal so that I can use this side for client and I can use this side for the server. So in order to use it for the client side, I need to go to the client directory or the folder. So I'll just simply write here CD. CD stands for changing directory or change directory. And then I'm going to write here the folder name in which I want to go, which is essentially the client folder. I hit enter and here you can see that now I am inside the client folder. 
And here, what I can do is that I can write here CD and then I can write here server. And here you can see that now I am inside the server directory. On the client side, I am going to install React.js. So in order to install React.js, I need to write a simple command here, which is essentially npx. And then I am going to write here create hyphen react hyphen app. And then I'm going to write here dot slash. One thing that I want to clear here that this npx create react app, it would install react into the directory that you would give the path here. So we want to install the react in our current directory, okay, which is essentially client. Um, we'll just give here dot slash, okay. So if you want to create or uh, install the react into another folder or directory, you can just simply type in the name here, okay. So now let's go ahead and let's hit enter. So we'll hit enter and now it would start to install react in the client folder. So here you can see that the react is installing. So in the meantime, we are going to go to our server side and we are going to initialize the package.json for installing the dependencies. So for that, we would run the command. We'll write here npm and then we would give a space We'd write here init, which stands for initialization. We'll put here hyphen Y, which essentially stands for yes. We hit enter. And here you can see that now we have the package.json, which has been initialized. And if we go to our server client, here you can also see package.json. Okay. So the dependencies that we are going to need are express, body parser, course, mongoose, nodemon. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to write a command to install all those dependencies. So here what I'm going to do is that I'm going to write a command as npm and then I'm going to write here install and then I am going to write here express and then after express I'm going to write here body parser and then uh, I'm going to write here course, which is another dependency. And then I'm going to write here mongoose. And then I'm going to write here nodemon. Okay. So this express here, basically it is used for express as a framework. This body parser, it is used for sending post requests. This course right here, it is used for cross origin requests. This mongoose right here, it is used for creating models. This node mon dependency, it will automatically reset the server in case of any change. So now when I will hit enter, these dependencies will start to be installed one by one on the server side. So once these dependencies are installed, now what we are going to do is that we are going to go to our server and we are going to create a new file with the name of index.js and in this file we are going to import these dependencies that we have installed. Okay, so we click here, we make it a little bit short. So now let's import all the dependencies that we have installed. So we'll do that quickly. Okay, so once you have imported the dependencies, we have to enable this new import syntax in the package.json file. Now let's go ahead and let's edit the package.json file so that we can activate these dependencies into node. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's click on package.json and here 
click here right after the comma which is after the index.js hit enter here you are going to write double quotes and inside the double quotes you're going to write type then put a colon here and then you're going to write here inside the double quotes module okay and now put a comma here after doing so it will enable the import syntax now also you need to remove this test from the scripts okay so let's just remove it and instead of this test script you're gonna write here start okay and then you're gonna put here colon and here double quotes and inside these double quotes you're gonna write here node mon and then you're gonna write here index.js so this right here is the npm start command so when we whenever we will run npm start command it would execute this okay so now we are done here on the server side so on the client side uh, you can see that react has been successfully installed and you have got this message uh, which says happy hacking so once the React is installed in the client side or client folder, you need to install a couple of dependencies here as well as similarly that you have done in the server side. So let's go ahead and let's try to install some of the dependencies. We're gonna install Axios, Moment, React Filebase 64, Redux and Redux Thunk. So let's go ahead and let's try to install them. So we'll just write here npm and then we'll write here install and then we'll write here the uh, dependency names one by one. So first of all, we want to install Exeus and then we want to install moment and then uh, we want to install react hyphen file hyphen base 64. Okay. And then we want to install redux and then we want to install redux hyphen thunk okay so uh exeus this one here this dependency is for making ip api requests excuse me okay and then this moment is for uh basically it is a library for working with time and date and this react file base 64 it is for converting images and then finally the redux and the redux tongue it is for performing asynchronous tasks using redux so in order to install them hit enter and it would start to install all these dependencies while the dependencies are downloading and installing let's take a look at the created project of react in the clients folder so here you can see that we have the node modules where all the installed node packages are placed we do not have to do anything with this so i'll close it then we have a public folder in which we have some images and an index.html file let me close it as well. Then we have the source folder or source directory where most of our time will pass and all the development, it would happen inside this source folder. In this folder, we have app.js, we have index.js, and we have some other CSS and JavaScript files. We'll begin with the index.js file, which is required for the React project. In the index.js file, I can see a couple of things. I can see that by default, React is imported here. I can also see that we have a default component which has been imported under the name of app. And this component has been imported by default from app.js. If I go to app.js, I can see that this is a functional component 
with some default HTML and CSS styling. So here you can see that inside the readme.md we have different information like getting started with the creation of the React app. We have uh, the NPM start option here. We have all sorts of basic information about React in here. So here, let's go ahead and let's write here npm start, okay? And now I'm going to hit enter and it would open up the React app in my browser. So here you can see that it is starting the development server. It opens up my browser. So it will take some time to run the app, so we will wait. So it is not starting, so I'll go back to my command line and here you can see that I can click on it uh, if I want to start from my computer. Um, if I click on it, it would open up the app. If I want to access this app on my network, I have to go to this IP address. So what I will do, I'll go to this address, localhost and then the port 3000. I'll press control and I will click it. Okay, so here you can see that now the React app has started. And now here you can see that on localhost and then the 3000 port, our React app is working. So now let's go ahead and let's try to edit our React app. So um, let's go ahead and let's go to the app.js and here let's try to edit this component. Um, here we have uh, the image, so let me just remove it, everything, every HTML thing that we have here. Let's just remove it and let's create a simple H1, okay, H1 is a header. And here let's write in here, skills, build, training, okay. So now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to press Control S and I'm going to save it. And I'm going to go to my app, I'm going to refresh it. In fact, without having to auto refresh, uh, I can already see skills build training here. Okay, so I, there was no need to refresh. Basically, it would automatically refresh. So now let's go back to the server and configure it. Let's create a MongoDB database, MongoDB cluster, some documents, set up the models, and connect our application to MongoDB database. So close everything and open up the index.js file of the server. So let me just basically close everything. Okay, so I'll save it. Let me just quickly close this as well. I'll go to the server, and here I will click on node uh, index.js, excuse me. And in here, what I'm going to do is that I am going to write constant and then app, put an equal sign, and I'm going to initialize the express package. So once I do that, basically now this app is a variable that has been made a copy of this express package. So whatever you can see if you are familiar with the, the object oriented programming this is basically an object and it has everything that it has okay so it is a copy of this express and wherever we would use the app it would be equivalent of using the express package so now let's set up the server a little bit like setting up the body parser for sending requests properly so now I'm going to write here app.use and I'm going to write here body parser and then uh, after body parser I'm going to write here dot json and then I have these brackets and inside these parentheses I'm going to write here the curly braces and inside the curly braces the first argument that I'm going to give is going to be limit. So I'm going to set the limit of the image. So let's set it to 20 megabytes. So this limit of 20 MB, it means that the JSON data cannot be greater than 20 MB. Okay. So this is the limit that I've put. 
and now I'm going to write here extended true. So this extended true, it makes sure that everything goes through the body parser other than string as well. So if you make it false or if you don't have it, uh, it would only accept strings. So once we have done it for JSON, we're going to copy this line and we're going to do the same thing for URL encoded. Okay, so we come here and instead of JSON here, uh, after pasting it, we just change it to URL encoded. Okay, so once we have done that, now let's set up the cores as well. So we're going to set up the cores right after it. So we'll hit enter and here we're going to write app dot use and inside of it, I'm going to write cores. Okay. You can also create an object, initialize the cores and then call the object here. Okay. It entirely depends on you and how do you like coding. So once we have done that, now let's move towards the creation of the database. We'll use the cloud Atlas version of MongoDB, which means our created database will be hosted on their cloud. So for that, let's go ahead and let's visit the website of MongoDB. We'll go to our favorite browser and in here, we're going to write mongodb.com slash cloud slash atlas. Okay. So once you have written this URL, just hit enter and it would take you to a page, something like this. So here you want to click on the start free button, click on it, and then you're going to have to sign up. So you can put in here your details if you want to, or you can directly sign up with Google. So click on the sign up with Google. Okay, so now I am going to click on I accept the privacy policy and the terms of service and click on this green submit button. So when I will click on it, okay, it will get you to this page and here you can set up your organization name. Okay, I'll write here skills build training and here you can name the project okay you can name it anything project zero project one or anything like let's say i name my project as skills build t project okay something like that so because you're working with the mern stack and the language that you're using is javascript you're going to select javascript okay make sure that you select javascript and then click on continue So on this page, you will see that you can select a cloud provider. I would select AWS and then you can select a cluster configuration. I would select this M0 cluster, which is shared and it is free forever. Okay. So then down here, you can select the country or the region for your cluster. I'll select North America. Now we are going to click on build M0 cluster. Okay, so once we have selected the cluster, now we are on the second step, which is enable data access. So here you can see the number one point is how would you like to authenticate your connection? I would choose username and password. And here I can type in any username that I want. Skills build T. I can give here any kind of password. I can click on create user. So once I have created the user, um, I can click on it. I can copy the details. Number two, where would you like to connect from? I would like to connect from my local environment. So I'll select this here. You can see I can also select my cloud environment. Number three, set your network security with any of the following options. So I would basically check and click on this, add my current IP address. 
This is my IP address and here is the description. I can update it if I want. Uh, I would click on add entry. And here you can see that now this continue button has been enabled. So click on it. And now we have come to the third page, which is pick connection. And now here you can see that we have a different connection method. We have sample application. We have the Mongo shell. We have connect your application and we have MongoDB compass. We are going to go with connect your application. Um, here you can see that it's written connect your application to your cluster using MongoDB's native drivers. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to select this connect your application and I'm going to click on continue. So now you can see that here we are on the final step, which is connect to the cluster. So here you can see from here we can choose our driver. Of course, we want to select Node.js. And here you can see that it says add your connection string into your application code. So what we are going to do is that we are going to copy this string from here. So once you have copied this string, now what you're going to do is that you're going to go back to your Visual Studio code. You're going to go to your index.js on the server side. And here you are going to create a variable. Um, here you can type in connection underscore URL. Put an equal sign here and I will paste the string that we have copied inside these single quotes. So here you can see that we have pasted it. Um, and the thing is that this one is the username that you have given there uh, in the MongoDB. And here you're going to type in your password, okay, whatever you have given. So your username and passwords are going to be different. So here you give your username and then colon and then here you give your password. Okay, so once you have done that, now what you're gonna do is that you're going to create the port variable and assign it the process.env.port or you're gonna assign it the 5000 port for the time being. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna write here constant port and then I write here equal sign and then I write here process dot env dot port okay and then I write here pipes and then I write here 5000 okay so this pipe means or okay so either it would choose this or it would choose this okay and since we have not defined our port environment yet, so the port 5000 will be assigned. After creating both of the connection URL and port variables, let's create the mongoose.connect function and provide it two parameters. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to write here mongoose. And once I do that, I'm going to write here dot connect. And then I'm going to write here uh, the argument or the parameter, which is essentially connection underscore URL. Put a comma here. Then I put curly braces. And inside these curly braces, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to write here use new URL parser colon true. Okay put a comma and then I write here use unified topology column and then I'm also gonna keep it true okay so the thing is that we have kept these two true because we want to avoid the warnings and errors in the console since this thing is a function it will return the promise okay so if the promise is resolved then it's going to uh, execute the dot then callback functions and if the promise is not resolved it is going to execute dot catch callback functions 
So what I'm going to do is that for that, I'm going to create a dot then callback function and I'm also going to create dot catch callback function. Okay, so now I would quickly type in here the then callback function. So now we have written our dot then callback function. If the connection is successful, uh, we want the app to listen and console the connection message which says connection is established and it is running on port and here 5000 port would be printed out because that's what we are using right here okay so once we have written it the dot then callback function now we are going to write here the dot catch callback function So now in the case of an error, the catch callback function, it is displaying the error message in the console. So finally, in the end, we are going to set the mongoose use find and modify value to false to avoid the warnings in the console. So in order to do that, I would write here mongoose and then I'm going to write here dot set. And then I am going to have here parentheses and inside these parentheses, I'm going to write use find and modify. And then I'm going to write here comma and I'm going to set it to false. Okay. Once I've done it successfully, this is all we need to do for connecting to the MongoDB database. Now you need to run the server by running the start script that we wrote in the package.json file. For starting the server's start script, you have to type npm start in the terminal on the server side. So here you are going to write here npm and then start, hit enter and it would start the server. So when you will run the server, and if it has printed server running at port 5000 then in that case it means that we have successfully established the database connection so we will wait we'll wait to see that what it is going to print To some extent, it takes indentation seriously. So I just press tab and I just indented the code a little bit. And then I got my message here, which says connection is established and running on port 5000, which means that our connection to MongoDB has been successful. Now it's time to create routes. A route is a section of express code that associates an HTTP verb and a URL pattern and a function that is called to handle that pattern. In the HTTP verb, it's like get in get, post, put, delete, etc. So the example that we're going to do is related to the student data. So whatever student data is going to be there it's going to be there in the form of routes in a file. So let's talk about that. Okay, so first of all, we are going to create another folder inside the server folder and we're going to call this server routes. Okay, or oh, excuse me, we're going to call this folder routes. So we click here and now we're going to type in the name of that server, which is essentially routes. We hit enter and now we have created the routes folder inside the server folder. So now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to create a file named as student.js inside the folder um, like this routes folder. Okay. And this file will contain all the routes related to the students, the students example that we will do uh, in future. So I'm going to click here and I'm gonna call it like new file 
uh, student.js okay I hit enter and now I have this file first of all I would import the Express here so I'll write here import and then I would write here Express from Express okay also now we will set up the router by creating an instance for express dot router so we come to the next line and in here we write here constant and then we write here router okay this is an instant that's gonna contain the value of express dot router so we type in here express dot router okay we initialize it kind of and now what we're gonna do is that we can add the routes all right so now what we can do is that we can start adding routes so I will write here uh, router dot get all right the syntax for adding the route is like this for example for creating the router for slash path using the get method will be something like this that I have written okay so inside the parameters it would take two arguments first one is the path and the second one is a callback function okay so let me quickly write down here two arguments so the first argument uh, is gonna be this slash then we are going to put a comma here and then we're gonna have a bracket here here we write here request and then we write here the second argument here inside the callback function which is going to be res and then I write here an equal sign like this angle bracket and then uh, I'm gonna have here the curly braces I'll go to the next line and here you can see that the structure has been created and now what I'm gonna do is that I'm going to send res in which I would mention that the router is working so I will write here res dot send and then here I'm gonna write router is working if you're wondering what this res is uh, this res stands for response and this req stands for request okay all right so after creating the router we have to export the whole router as well so in order to export the whole router I'm gonna write here something like this so I'll write here export and then I'm gonna write here default and then I'm gonna type in here router okay so once you have done this okay so now what we're gonna do is that we are going to go to the index.js file and in here we are going to import the router that we have just created so we go here and in here we write import and then we write here uh, student routes okay and then from and then I'm gonna write here the path so I will write here uh, dot slash routes and then I'm gonna write here slash students dot js okay so once I do that I put a semicolon here and now this statement or this line would successfully import the router in the index.js file now we will use express middleware and use app.use syntax to connect this to our application in the app.use the first parameter is going to be the path for all the routes in the student.js file and the second parameter is gonna be the student routes that we have just imported so let me write down here the app dot use and the parameters and then I'll tell it to you again so I will write here app dot use I put brackets here and in here I'm gonna write like single columns and then I write here slash and then I type in here students and then I put here comma and then I write here student routes okay so once I do that I put a semicolon here and now we are all done okay 
So the first parameter that you see here, as I have talked about previously, it is the path for all the routes in the student.js file. So for the second argument or the parameter, it is this one, the student routes that we have just imported. This means that every route in the student.js file will start from the slash students route. Okay, you see here slash students. So let's say if we have um, anything in the student.js, like for example, if we have student name, so uh, that route will start from slash student. So if we want to access that route, we have to type in slash students slash student name. Okay. And similarly, slash student slash slash student role number if we are accessing the student role number, etc. Okay, so this thing will continue uh, so on and so forth. Okay, so now let's go ahead and let's save this file student.js and also save this index.js file. Press control S on your computer and then go to your browser and here type in localhost colon 5000 because that's where that is the port where we are running our server and then we write here slash and then we write here students so now hit enter and here you can see that it says a router is working now that's perfect because our routers are now configured so now let's move on to the next step so let's go back to our visual studio code and here let's create a good structure of folders in here okay so first of all on the server side what we're gonna do is that we're gonna create controllers um, the controllers basically they are dedicated for the functions that accept the request and the response and also we are going to create uh, the models for keeping all the schemas in it well if the question is what is a schema uh, since we know that the data is stored in mongodb as a document and a schema means defining what our document will look like in the mongodb so first we create the controllers folder so let me just right click on here and then i go to the new folder and here i'm going to type in controllers okay so once I have done that, I hit enter, I have successfully created that controllers folder. So once we have created this controllers folder inside of it, we're going to create a new file and we're going to call it student.js. Okay. So we write here student.js. Hit enter. And now the student.js file has been created. In this file, we will write the routes function. So we move the function from router to the controller, we give it a name, we export the function and import it in the routes and use it. Okay, so now what we're going to do is that this is a feature in Visual Studio Code. You just drag it and bring it here and here you can see that you can work in two, two files simultaneously, right? And the student.js uh, from the controllers and in the student.js from the routes. So the idea is that this is the callback function here that I have selected, okay? So the thing is that when we have a lot of routes, it's gonna get messy, okay? So you cannot have uh, multiple call functions, callback functions here, and uh, you know still you'll be able to understand what's going on because it's gonna create a mess. So it is better to have or to create a function and then use that function to call that uh, piece of code or specifically to call that callback function okay so in order to create a function I will go to this uh, student.js file in the controllers and here we're gonna write here constant and then we're gonna write here get students and then I'm gonna put an equal sign here I'll just simply copy this uh, function which is essentially this one the callback function and i'm going to paste it right here and remove it from here okay so let's just remove it 
So now, um, if you want to use this function right here, uh, you have to uh, do some steps, okay? So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to write here export. And now I need to call it here. But before calling it here, I need to import it, right? So I'll write here simply import. And then after that, I'm going to put here the, uh, you know, angle brackets. Um, excuse me, not, it's not angle braces, but curly braces, okay? So once I have curly braces here, now I'm going to write here get students, okay? So once I do that, now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to write here from, and here I'm going to type in the path, okay, slash controllers, and then I'm going to write here uh, slash students or student.js, okay? So now here you can see that we have uh, imported it successfully and now we can call this function right here. So how do we call it? Simply, we'll just type in here get students, okay? So now we have called this function successfully. Um, so basically now this callback function we do not need to write in here. We have successfully called this get students function so it means that this get students it is equivalent to all of this callback function so whenever wherever you will write get students it means that you're writing this callback function okay so now we are done with the controller stuff uh, we're gonna save all of that so we'll press ctrl s i will press ctrl s and now we are going to create models so in order to create models, first of all, you're going to go to your server folder and inside here, right click new folder and name it models. Okay. So now hit enter models has been created. So inside of this models folder, we are going to create a new file and we're going to name it as student.js. Okay. So now we have the student.js file in the models. Now we are going to import mongos in here. So we're going to write some code here. So we'll write here import and then we're going to write here mongos and then we're going to write here from and then we write here single quotes and then we also write here mongos. Okay. We'll put a semicolon here and now we're going to come to the next line and here we're going to write here constant. So basically we are going to create an instance for mongoose.schema, okay, which is a function which basically gets an object. So uh, let's call it student schema, okay, something like this. Put an equal sign here and then we write here mongoose.schema, okay, something like this. We put brackets here. So inside of it, now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to have curly braces, which is an object. And in this object, we will define our schema that how our students documents uh, will look like. So um, we're going to write here the registration number or the roll number. So let's type in here registration number. And then we write here number, comma, and then we're going to write here name, and then we're going to write here string, comma. These uh, here, if you're wondering, this is a data type, okay, for the name. And here, this number is the data type for a registration number. So now let's move on to the next line, and maybe we want to add grade, okay. So for the grade, the data type is also going to be string. Okay, so here you can see that we have now defined the uh, numbers, the, the registration number, name, and the grade with the data types, number, string, and string. So now let me show you that how you can actually give a value by default. So th these variables are not going to have any value by default. So I'll show you that how you can give uh, a value by default in your schema. So for that, you are just going to write here a uh, section and then you write here a column and then you write here curly braces, you hit enter 
and in here first of all you define the type which is essentially string you put a comma here uh, come to the next line and in here you're gonna write default okay you put a colon again and then you write here a okay so which is a default value I'm giving here you can give any value that you want so I'm gonna give here a for just example purposes okay so now we are done here so let's say that uh, if we want to give some value which is like which has a lot of values so I'm talking about arrays so how do you deal with arrays here in your schema so for that for example the student is going to have a lot of subjects right um, maybe five maybe eight so for that we can create an array and in order to have an array here you write your subjects colon and then these kind of brackets and inside these brackets you're gonna type in here strings okay string excuse me so once you have done it now uh, just come here put a semicolon this is all done all right so now we have created a schema so now let's go ahead and let's create a model all right so in order to create a model what you're going to do is that you're going to write here a constant and then you're going to write here student put an equal sign here and then you're going to write here mongoose okay and once you have written here mongoose you're going to write here dot model and then uh, you're going to have brackets here the first argument is going to be student and then uh, student excuse me because you need to uh, be sure that you don't put an s here we have written here student we have also written here student and now we put a comma here and here we type in here student schema okay so once we have written here student schema now what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna put a semicolon here at the end of the line okay so now we come to the next line and in here we are going to export this model that we have created so we're gonna write here export and then we're gonna write here default and then we're gonna write here student okay so put a semicolon here and now using this model we can perform our CRUD or CRUD operations so CRUD operation uh, CR, C stands for creation or creating and R stands for read um, U stands for update and D stands for delete okay so now the models are created uh, let's start creating the school management system and start from adding the student so uh, for adding the user or the student let's first create a new route in the routes folder and this time the data will be passed using the post request so let's start building logic so um, let's save it press ctrl s and now let's go ahead and let's uh, let me just remove this quickly okay so let me just remove this as well um, now I go to the routes and here um, I open this student uh, .js in the routes folder mm -hmm. so first of all I'm gonna import the student uh, which which is the model that I have created uh, just recently so I'm going to go here and I'm gonna write here import okay and then I'm gonna write here student and then I'm gonna write here from and then I'm gonna write here codes single codes and then I write here dot dot slash models slash student dot js okay then I write here semicolon all right so now what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna press ctrl C here so when you come here this is a feature of visual studio code if you are here you press ctrl C you come to the next line now you press ctrl V and it would simply copy this line so what we're gonna do is that we are gonna type in here instead of get uh, we're gonna put here post okay and here I'm gonna write here create student so basically this create student is a function that we are going to create in the controllers uh, folder and in the student.js file which is inside the controllers okay similarly like we have created this function so this function is for creating like calling the callback function okay so 
uh, one more thing that you need to do is that you have created this create student now you need to import it basically okay so you put a comma here and then you write here create student all right so now what we are going to do is that uh, we are going to create this function in the controllers folder inside the student.js so we'll go here and uh, let me just basically do it something like this okay so now here we have the student.js from the controllers folder and here we have the student.js from the routes folder okay so uh, we have this create student that we're gonna create so we'll just go here we write here constant and then we write here create a student and then we write here our equal sign and now we are just simply going to copy this okay and we are simply going to paste it all right so once we have done that uh, we're gonna type in here export just before it all right so now what i'm gonna do is that i'm going to create a try catch block and the reason behind creating a try catch block is that we're gonna get a request from the client saying that okay i want uh, some students or some data of students so we're going to create a try cache block to handle that request from the client side. So when the request comes, uh, we basically put a code here in the try block. OK, uh, so basically, if we have some data, it basically executes that try block and it returns whatever result we get. So in case if it doesn't work out and it produces some kind of error, then for that we have the catch block okay so this is like some sample uh, response so i'm just going to remove it and here now i'm going to write a try catch block okay so i will just simply write here try and here you can see that it has given me a suggestion for try catch statement so i'm just going to click it and here you can see that it has created this uh, pattern for me and inside this uh, try block what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna create a constant uh, with all students okay then I put an equal sign here and then I'm gonna write here the model which is essentially student and then I write here find okay so what this line does that uh, it's gonna go to the model which is essentially student and then it's gonna say that okay find me uh, all the students data that is available okay according to the schema that we created right so uh, then it basically finds it and it saves it in the all students so if we want to use that data of course we want to return it so we will use that all students variable so now we will come to the next line here so before we do that uh, let me tell you that when we when the client would send the request here the thing is that in the database you're gonna have a lot of data so it could take a while so for that we're gonna use here a function they called as await and this callback function because of using this await is gonna become async okay all right so simple is that and now I'm going to send back the response in the try catch block and I'm going to write here response dot status or res dot status and then I'm going to say 200 um, 200 means okay and then we're going to write here dot json and then I'm going to write here uh, the uh, all students variable that we have okay so we write here all students put a semicolon here and now we are done here so if I were to explain to you again um, it would basically find this student from the student model store it in the all students variable and then it would basically send back all the students to the client and if you remember we talked initially when we were starting that uh, the good thing about Mern stack is that everywhere in the front end back end and into the database the data moves in the form of json okay so which is really cool because that way it doesn't have to do any kind of conversion and that is why it's really fast 
So this is the try block and now let's move on to the catch block. Uh, and let's say if there is an error, uh, in that case, we also want to send a response. So for that, we'll just write here res and then we write here status. And then we're gonna write here brackets 404 and then we're gonna write here dot uh, json and then uh, we're gonna write here uh, brackets the parentheses and inside these parentheses I can have a message okay so for that I'm gonna write here message I put a column here and then I'm gonna write here the error dot message okay so it would basically print out the error message whatever uh, it is okay so now uh, we are going to do the same thing for this create student so for example uh, if we have got a request from the uh, client side to create a student and of course we'll get that request um, and when we get that request, we need to uh, handle it efficiently so that we can uh, create and store the data uh, into the database. So let me just remove this uh, response. Okay, this was just an example response. Um, and now what I'm going to do is that first of all, I'm going to create a constant here. Uh, let's name it student. And then I put here equal sign and then I write here request.body. Okay. So what's going to happen that uh, whatever request you get, all the body of it, it gets stored in this constant, which is known as student. Okay. So once you do that, now you're going to create another constant and let's call it new student. Okay. And we put an equal sign here and then we're going to write here new. And here we're going to call the model that we basically created okay um, in the models folder inside the student.js if you remember so now what we're gonna do that inside here we're gonna pass the request okay or the variable so here it contains uh, the request body that has come from the client side so we're just gonna pass it here okay so now um, it's a coincidence that our model name and our variable name is the same so it is uh, the VS code and the JavaScript it is smart enough to recognize that okay so which one is model and which one is the variable so this one is model here and this one is the variable this one okay so let's just put a semicolon here to end this line and now what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna create a try cache block here okay so for that I, if I just type in here try uh, if I click on it, it would automatically create a try cache block and in here What I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna write here new student dot save Okay, so basically I am saving my data So when I'm saving this data into the database uh, I have to wait right it would take some time so for that I would again use here the await function that I used in the previous function so once you use await function, you have to make this callback function async, okay? So now we are done with that. So once if it is successfully saved, now we are going to give a successful response. So for that, I would type in here response.status and uh, I'm gonna put in here the brackets and inside these brackets, I'm going to write here 201 and then I write here dot and then I write here JSON similarly I'm gonna pass this uh, in the JSON format and here I type in new student okay so now I put a semicolon here and we are done with the try block so now let's move forward and let's handle the cache block so let's say if some kind of error occurs and we are not able to save the data into the database in that case we are going to handle that exception right we need to handle it so inside this cache block i'm going to write another uh, response status and then i'm going to write here the parentheses and inside these parentheses, I'm going to write here 409 and then I'm going to write here dot JSON and here 
I write here the error message. Uh, for that, I write here curly uh, braces. And here, I write message. And then I write here columns. And then I write here error dot message. Okay. So whatever message or whatever error comes, it would basically print that out uh, with the help of which the client could identify that, okay, I'm getting this error. That's why the file or the student was not created and it was not saved. Okay. So now we are all done here. And if you are wondering that what this 409 is and what this 201 is and what this 404 and what this 200 is, these are general uh, formats like 200 is for okay and 404 is for file not found. So if you wanna find out about uh, these responses, then you can simply go to your browser and go to the httpstatuses.com, okay? So when you go there, so here you will be able to see all the HTTP status codes. So here you can see that for 201, it means that the file or the request, whatever you have requested, it has been created, okay, for 201. For 200, it's okay. So if we go into the 404 line, you can see that 404 means uh, not found, okay? And if we go to 409, it means a conflict. So if it would not create the student uh, data, it means that there is a conflict and it would exactly print out the error message, whatever it is, because of this error dot message. Okay, so now we are done on the server side and uh, we have basically uh, created arrangements so that we can uh, fetch the data of the students using the client side and we have created the arrangements that how we can insert or create the data uh, Using the client side. So we are done with the back end. Okay, we have created it successfully Now we need to move to the front end and let's try to create the front end and let's make arrangements in such a way that uh, the user or the client could insert the data uh, so that he can create the data in the backend, okay? And similarly, we need to make such arrangements that when the user or the client fetches the data from the database or from the backend, uh, we should be able to display it on the front end, okay? So now we're gonna deal with the front end and for that, I would go to the clients folder let me just close this entire server folder because we are done here and we're gonna create some forms and we're gonna create some folders uh, using forms we will create the data create the student in the backend and using table will show the data uh, that we have fetched okay so let's go ahead let's just close this server folder let's open up this client folder and let me just uh, close all the unnecessary windows from here so now what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna go to the source folder and here I am going to go to the app.js and I'm going to delete some of the unnecessary uh, components or some lines you can say so what I'm gonna do is that I'm going to delete this header tags entire so let me just remove it now they are removed and now once we have removed it press ctrl s and save it and now uh, go to the index.js file from here okay go to index.js and here uh, remove this react.strict mode inside the reactdom.render okay so we will remove this, okay? Uh, and we'll also remove the end tag, okay? Make sure that you do not remove the comma here. So now what I'm gonna do is that I'm going to save it. I press Control S and now this file has been saved as well. Okay, so now we have removed all the unnecessary and unwanted lines that we had in our code. So now what we're gonna do is that the idea is that this uh, tutorial is not your general HTML CSS tutorial. 
and for sure we are gonna use some HTML CSS and styling for the front end right we uh, we're gonna be needing some for creation of the forms and we're gonna need in some for the creation of the tables right okay so for that we are going to install uh, some library okay that basically we uh, install to use the CSS or styling okay so what we're gonna do and I'm assuming that you already know HTML CSS because in that way if you already if you already know then you will use it effectively so uh, here come here press control C come out of here uh, it would ask you do you want to terminate the bad job press Y hit enter and you would come outside uh, here and now what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna run a simple command to install uh, the library okay so the name of the library that I'm going to install is material UI okay so in order to install material UI I need to run a simple command here I would write here npm and then I would write here install and then I would write here add the rate of material and then I would write here hyphen UI slash core okay so once I have written this now I'm going to hit enter and it would install that material UI uh, library it would start to install it so we will wait okay so now we have successfully installed material uh, UI library now what we're gonna do is that we are going to create a components folder inside the source folder so the thing is that uh, the front-end things in react you do it with the help of components so uh, for for the creation of the student and the, for the creation of the data we're gonna create one component and then for the display of the data we're gonna create another so we'll basically create two components um, all we have to do is that we have to go into the source folder right click and click on new folder Create a folder here named as components hit enter the components folder has been created now create another folder inside of the components uh, which would be known as the create student or create component let's just call it create student okay so hit enter and here you can see that one folder has been created under the components so now let's create another folder um, which is going to be another folder in the components folder um, for second component and we will create this folder let's name it as show student okay so now we have two folders for two components now let's go ahead and let's create a JS file uh, so we'll click on new file and let's name it create student.js so the idea is that you can name this file whatever you want we are naming this file same name as the folder name so that it's easy for us to remember and recall whenever we want to right so let's go to the second component which is show student and let's create a file here with the same name as well for our own ease okay so we create a file here show student.js all right so once we have done that now the thing is that we want to create a structure of the web page something like we want to have a big head in, in, in on the beginning of the page and uh, we want to create uh, tables on the left side of the page and we want to create a form on the right side of the page so if you could see the structure on the screen right now um, this is the kind of structure that we want to create and we have not created it yet here okay so for that we have to code so what we will do we'll go to the app.js file okay and in here we're gonna do some coding so first of all the uh, material UI that we have installed we're gonna import uh, a lot of things from that uh, material UI library so what we would do would just simply write here import and then we're gonna have brackets here or curly braces and inside here we're gonna write container that's what we want to import we also want to import app bar 
we want we also want to import typography okay and we also want to import uh, grow and we also want to import grid so where do we want to import it from we want to import it from the material ui so we'll just write here material ui core hit semicolon okay so this line basically it would import container app bar typography grow and grid from the material ui library that we even just installed so now what we're going to do is that here we have the main function app okay so now we're going to work on some of the front end all right so whatever we would do here we do it inside these div tags so first of all we're going to use uh, the container so we'll just simply write here the container tags so we'll just simply write here container and uh, basically here are the container tags so what i'm going to do is that here i am going to write here max width all right put it equals to and then i'm going to write here um lg okay so once i have written here lg now what i'm going to do is that i'm going to bring the container tag to the next line and inside this container i'm going to have another tag which is going to be app bar okay so i write here app bar all right and uh, now what i'm going to do is that inside this app bar i'm going to write here class name i give it some class name and then i put an equal sign here i have curly braces and inside these curly braces i'm going to call it something like classes dot bar okay or classes dot app bar let's say in case you're wondering that what is this app bar and what is this container um, so the the answer to your question is that this app bar and this container and whatever um, like grid or typography that we'd use here they are basically the react components uh, that have already been created we do not need to uh, reinvent the wheel okay um, we have been given these uh, when we have imported this material ui okay so all of that is coming in from here so these are the react components and if you're wondering about this class name this is related to the css styling okay in the css you basically create a class and then you uh, give some specific styles uh, to that class and then whenever you use that class basically uh, all the characteristics of that class uh, gets applied to whatever tags you're using okay so this is the thing so here you can see uh, we have created the class but uh, it's actually it actually doesn't exist as of now so what i'm going to do is that i'm going to create it um, and of course uh, whatever characteristics i would give to that class we'll be using them here so in order to create that uh, first of all you go to your source folder and here create a new file uh, let's name it as styles.js and hit enter so let's go inside the style.js and here uh, let's create that class so first of all uh, you are going to import here some styles so uh, we are going to write here import make styles and then uh, we are going to import it from the material ui so we'll just write here from and then we write here add the rate off and then we write here material ui core and then we write here slash styles okay so if you are wondering that what this styles is it's like you're basically importing a specific uh, instance or is a specific styles from material ui okay so once we have done that now what i'm going to do is that i'm going to come to the next line and i'm going to export here export default and i'm going to write here make styles and um, then i'm going to have here a callback function and i'm going to have an equal sign an arrow sign here and then um, i'm going to write here another uh, 
brackets and let's go to the next line and let's write here app bar the class that we just created uh, in case you forgot let me show you we were working with it in the app.js here we have created this class and now uh, we are inside this styles.js and we are basically creating the characteristics of this class so what you're gonna do is that you're gonna have here curly braces and inside these curly braces whatever uh, styling you want to give it you could give it okay so you just write here border radius okay and let's say that it's 15 and then we put a comma here let's come to the next line let's give it some margins uh, we write here margin and then we give it like 30 pixels or whatever 30 px and then we write here zero we put a comma here okay and uh, we come to the next line and here uh, we write here display and let's give it a flex display okay so once you do that now you put a comma here come to the next line and the next characteristic I'm gonna give is the flex direction okay so flex direction and then uh, I give the flex direction as column okay put a comma come to the next characteristic and then you're gonna write here justify content okay and I'm gonna give it like center and let's put a comma here come to the next line and here you're gonna write here align items okay you wanna align all the items so write here align items and then write here center and then put a comma here so now we are done with the class okay so what we have done is that we have given some styles to the app bar okay so we have given some margins we have given some border radius and um, we have aligned the items perfectly so that it don't uh, it, it doesn't look ugly on the screen okay so the reason behind doing um, this th these things quickly I could have shown you directly on the browser but then it would have consumed much time so I'm directly doing all of that um, I'm gonna create some of the classes I'm gonna assign them and once and for all uh, we'll run the code and I'll show you all the display uh, at once okay so now we have created the characteristics of the file uh, let me go back to the app.js so now what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna do a few more things here so I give a position here which is essentially gonna be static and then I'm gonna give here a color uh, which of course it's uh, going to inherit okay so now what I'm gonna do is that uh, inside this uh, tag the app bar I'm gonna use another tag which is gonna be of typography okay okay so um, I'll just simply write here typography okay the with the, with a capital T so we have it and now what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna give here a class as well so I just write here class name and then I give an equal sign here and then I write here classes dot heading okay and then basically I give it a variant so variant equals h2 and then I basically give here a line equals center and once we have done that now what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna type here the title I could type here anything so I could say um, students and I could say create and show okay so you can name it anything you want so once we have done that um, now what I'm gonna do is that I'm going to come out of the app bar tag but I'm gonna make sure that I am staying inside the container tag so what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna write here grow tags okay um, and inside these grow I'm gonna do in and inside here uh, I'm gonna create a container uh, of course okay and inside this container we are gonna create grids for tables okay so now inside this container I'm gonna write here uh, grid tags 
okay so we'll write here grid and of course uh, these tags are have been automatically created I'm gonna basically uh, assign some properties to the grid tag what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna assign it some properties so I will just write here container justify equals to and then I'm gonna say space between and after that what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna align the items okay so I write here align items equals uh, and I say stretch okay so once I have done that now what I'm gonna do is that uh, inside this I'm going to create two items okay so I just simply write here grid okay and uh, I'm just simply going to write here uh, inside the first tag I'm gonna write let me just go to the next line and inside this grid I'm gonna write item XS equals brackets 12 and then I'm gonna write here SM equals 7 okay and once I've done that now I'm going to create another grid okay and I'm gonna do pretty much the same thing inside of it and j just one thing that is gonna be um, not similar which is the size so instead of 12 uh, here I think we're gonna keep it 12 and then instead of 7 we're gonna write here 4 okay so now we have created two grids okay so here uh, in the first grid I'm going to create a table and in the second grid I'm going to create a form okay so let's start so first of all for table uh, what I'm gonna do is that here I am going to have a app bar tag uh, component that I'm gonna use so I'll just simply write here app bar and then uh, inside here app bar I'm gonna write here a class name essentially and then I'm gonna write here equal and then I'm gonna have brackets here and inside these brackets I'm gonna write here classes dot app bar and once I've done that now I'm gonna move forward I'm gonna write here position which is essentially going to be static and uh, similarly I'm going to inherit the colors uh, which are going to be uh, like here I'm gonna write inherit okay so once I've done that um, now what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna create a uh, student tag inside of the app bar tag okay mm -hmm. So here, uh, what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna write here a component student. And basically this student component is uh, the one component that we're gonna be importing from here, okay? So from the components folder. So once I have written that, now I have to import it. So what I would do, I would just go here and uh, I would write here import. And then uh, what I'm gonna do is that I'm going to write here student. And then I'm gonna write here from and I'm gonna write here single quotes and once I do that now I am going to write here dot slash uh, components okay and then I'm gonna write here uh, slash the component folder name which is essentially st show student and then I am going to write here slash the file name which is essentially show student dot js okay so even if you type in show student that is okay uh, even if you type show student dot js that is okay as well so now put a semicolon here uh, and if even if i remove this dot js it would work just fine so now we have imported uh, this show student component with the name of student and we have used it right here uh, in the student tag so one more thing that you need to do is that uh, excuse me you do not need to put this slash uh, in the beginning you have to put it in the end okay so you put the slash here and now you are all good to go now what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna create a form in the in the second grid 
Okay, so here what I'm going to do in the second grid, I'm going to write another app bar. So it's almost going to be same. Uh, let me just copy it from here. So once you copy it, you come here, press control V. Only thing that is going to be changed is this component. Okay. So let's just rename this component to anything uh, that we want to name it. So let's just name it uh, instead of student. Let's just name it create or we can also name it create student, whatever you like. So now we have created this create uh, tab here. Uh, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to have to import it. Okay, the import the component. Although we have not created anything in the component yet, we are doing the styling thing first. And then we're going to go and we're going to create those components. So those components will automatically be imported right here. Okay, so we'll just write here import. And then uh, we're going to write here create. Okay, that's that is the name that we have given right here. Uh, if you can see. Okay, so after writing here create, um, I'm going to write here from and then here I'm going to give the um, address to that specific component, which is essentially inside the components folder inside the the other one here is the create student, right? So we write here create student and then we write here create student dot uh, js or even if you don't write dot js that is okay okay so now it's time to create a component so what i'm going to do is that i'm going to go here in the components folder um, and in here i have two components essentially create student and show student so first of all let's deal with the show student component uh, we have show student dot js and of course we are going to have to create this component um, you can imagine that we have to do a lot of coding stuff here okay so what i'm going to do is that i'm going to import some part of this component um, from the internet i'm basically just going to copy paste okay and i'm going to copy paste the material ui um, content or some code from there so for that just go to your favorite browser and type in here material hyphen ui.com so you go to their website and from here of course i want to show the students data so i'm going to have to import something which is related to like table okay so i need to import that component so i'll just go here and here i would basically um, go to the components and from here i would scroll down and I'll keep on scrolling until I see this okay so here you can see that in the data display section you have table you have list and you have of course you have all sorts of uh, sections that you can import so I'll go to tables and here you can see that I have a ready-made component for tables right here okay so this is kind of a table okay so what I'm going to do is that I am going to uh, click on here, uh, first of all, so it would show you the source. So basically, I'm going to copy paste all of this code inside our um, show student component. So I'll just simply copy this source, click on it, and it will copy the source. Now I'll go to my Visual Studio code. And in here, I'm just simply going to paste all of that make sure that you are in the component like show student show student.js and here simply just paste all of it so now we have pasted all of this code okay from the website and you know that from where we have uh, copied it so the thing is that it's not going to stay the same we are going to make a lot of changes into this code uh, for that you have to watch this video very carefully from now onwards okay so now before we make changes uh, in this code uh, let's go ahead and let's import some of the things for the uh, other component which is essentially create student.js okay so inside the create student component a file which is essentially create student.js uh, we're gonna import something related to form so think of forms what comes to your mind like it, it's the text fields right it's it's the labels and it's the button right so um, go to material hyphen ui.com and here uh, search for the section uh, inputs 
And here you can see inputs, you have buttons, you have checkboxes, you have switch, you have text field. So we need text field. So I'll just simply click on text field. And here you can see that this is the basically kind of structure of three types of fields. So we have standard, we have filled and we have outline. So here you can see that we have these three text fields. So the idea is that whatever text field you want, you want to keep it. Okay, for example, if I want the outline one, I will keep this line and from the code inside the form tags, I'm going to remove the other two. So if you want a standard, then you can keep this line and remove the other two. If you want filled, then you can keep this line and remove the other two. So here is this uh, source. If I click on it, I could see all the source right here. And this is where I would make the changes. So first of all, what I would do, I would just simply copy this source code. Okay. And I'm going to go to my Visual Studio code. And here I can see that I am inside the create student.js component. Uh, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to paste it. Okay. And once I do paste it, uh, what I'm going to do is that I am going to um, remove the other two text fields. So I will just simply remove it. Okay. So once I remove it, now what I'm going to do is that uh, I have basically the text field here. Okay. Which is basically it is labeled as outline. We have variant, which is outline and the ID is outline basic, right? So now we are done here uh, with the copy paste inside the create student component. So now what we can do is that we can uh, run the application to see our output now. Okay, we have done enough work so that we could see some of the things on our output. So uh, press control S, save it and make sure that uh, you have pressed control S here as well and saved it as well. So um, now let's come to the terminal and here I'm going to write here npm start so that I can start my application and see the result. So I'll click on, uh, I'll basically write here npm start, hit enter. And now it would basically um, start my application and I'd be able to see some of the results on my browser. Okay. Okay. So here you can see that I have some errors like in the app.js, I have not imported the classes. Uh, I've not worked with it. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to go to my app.js file. And in here, uh, what I'm going to do is that just before this return, I'm going to add something here. So I just have to write here constant. And then I write here classes equals. Of course, I'm importing these classes um, everywhere uh, in my components and in here as well. So I need to have classes. So what I'm going to do is that th this classes is an instance. So I'm going to make it an instant instance of use styles. Okay. So, so now what I'm going to do is that basically uh, we're using this use style. So we have to import uh, this style or JS that we've created, right? So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to write here import and then I'm going to write here use styles and then I'm going to write here from and then I'm going to write here uh, columns then I write here dot slash styles okay so now we are absolutely uh, done here and now I'm just press uh, I'm going to just press control s I save it here you can see that we have no uh, errors so what I'm going to do is that I'm going to go back to my browser and here you can see that it has automatically refreshed and here you can see that we have a table okay this data is random um, data okay it has no meaning because we have not entered it it was already in the template so we're gonna make changes to it here you can see that we have the title okay and here you can see that we have one text field uh, which says outline so the obvious thing that I see here is that first of all, I need to give this table a heading or title or something like that. And here I also need to have more than one uh, text fields, of course. And of course, I need to have a button and I also need to have a heading here as well. So 
For that, I'm going to make some changes in the code, which I'll show you shortly. Um, and then we're going to again refresh our application and see if those changes have uh, taken effect. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to go to my um, Visual Studio Code and I'm going to go to my create student.js and in here, uh, I'm just before this form tag, I'm going to create a heading. Um, let's say I create a ace2 size heading and uh, I call it create student. Okay. So the thing is that right now you can see that it's giving some sort of error. Okay. It's not accepting this header right upside the form. So in order to make this error go away, all you have to do is that you have to create an empty tag, something like this. And once you have created it, you have to close it here. Okay. So now uh, basically this error would go away and this create student header would work. Okay. So if you do not have this empty tag, it's going to cause an error. So now let's just save it. Press control S. And if we go to our browser here, you can see that we have a heading of create student. So we can add a button here as well. So what we will do, we can randomly type in a code here, or I could go here in the inputs, click on button. And here, uh, I'd be able to see different sort of buttons here. Okay. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to click here and here from here, what I'm going to do is that I'm just simply going to copy uh, here. You can see that I have different sorts of buttons like for default, uh, for primary, for secondary. So from here, I do not need to copy all the code. Um, I just need to copy the button tags. Okay. Whatever button I like, I copy that. And one more thing I do is that I just copy this import. Okay. I need to import the button. All right. So I'll just simply, first of all, copy the import copy it, come to my Visual Studio code. And here, I'm just going to simply paste it. So now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to go back to my browser. And from here, uh, what I will do, I will just simply copy this button. Okay, copy it, come here, and I will paste it right after this text field. Okay, I do not want to paste it after the form tags. So here you can change the text from uh, primary to let's call it create or create student. Okay, simple create is enough. So now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to save it. Uh, but before saving it, let's just save it right here so that we do not lose the progress. Uh, I also want uh, multiple text fields, right? So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to simply copy this text field like three more times or in total, uh, I want to write it four times here. So I'll just simply do that. And now I will save it. So I'll press control S and I'll go uh, to my browser. And here you can see that I have create student. Okay. Which is a heading. And instead of one text field, now I have four and I also have this create button. Uh, and we are now um, moving forward with our progress in on the front end. Okay, so we are done with the back end previously when we are working with the server folder. Now we are in the client folder. Okay, so now if we take a look at our, um, you know, application page, the thing is that now we just need to do two things. One thing is that we want to change the label. Okay, we do not want to keep it as outline. And uh, another thing that we need to do is that we need to uh, add a heading here on the table. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to go to my Visual Studio code and here instead of the outline label, of course, I'm going to label it as a registration number or something because that's what students usually have. So registration number uh, and then I can change the second label name to the, let's say, uh, name of the student. And then the third, I can change it to, let's say, grade. And then the fourth, I can change it to, let's say, uh, section. Okay. Um, class section or something like that. So let's just save it. And let's go to the other uh, show student.js. 
And here uh, we pretty much do the same thing. So what I'm going to do is that I am going to scroll down here. And here I can see uh, just before uh, this table container, I'm, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to enter a header, okay? And I give it a heading as let's say all students, okay? And here you can see that it is giving me the error. So I need to add the empty tags. So I add an empty tag here and I add an empty tag here at the end as well, okay? So now if I save it and here you can see that I have no errors right here. I go to my application and here you can see that now I have the title. Okay, so forget about this data. This is just random or dummy data. We're going to uh, make changes to the data later uh, and now we're going to do the coding thing. Okay, so this data, one thing is that this data is static. Okay. Uh, and what we're going to do is that we're not going to give static data here rather we're going to give here dynamic data or we're going to fetch the data directly from the database or from the backend. So now what we are going to do is that we're going to go back to our Visual Studio code. Uh, here you can see that we are in the showstudent.js uh, component. Uh, what we are going to do is that we're going to go to the create student.js component and here you can see that we have basic text fields. Um, basically what we need to do is that we need to change this name uh, because we're going to use it in the future and we don't want to use basic text fields okay we want to use something that uh, we do remember so um, as we are in the create student.js file um, so what we can do is that we can name it as uh, create student so we'll just simply write here create student okay so once we do that um, now what we're going to do is that we are going to create a constant um, and we're going to create a use, use state. Okay, use state is a hook in the React and I'll explain to you what it does. So you're going to write here constant and then you're going to write here um, brackets and inside these brackets you're going to write your student and then you're going to write your comma and then you write your set student. Okay. So now we write here equal sign and then we write here use state and then uh, we write here basically the brackets and inside these brackets we write here curly braces. So now what you're going to do is that you're going to write here registration number okay uh, and let's say it's zero and uh, now we're going to put here a comma and then uh, we say student name and then we um, leave it empty put a comma here and then we write here grade and of course it is a string so we write here columns put a comma here and then of course the section uh, is also going to be string so we put single columns and leave it empty and uh, that is it we put a semicolon here Okay, so uh, remember that you do not need to put a comma here right after uh, the section because it is ending here. Okay, so uh, if I talk about use state, uh, it's a React hook. Okay, so let's talk about this use state. Uh, use state is a React hook, and what it does is that it basically updates the data uh, in in the text fields on the front end. Okay, so whenever you will write or you will write new things or whenever you will uh, add some new things into the text view, it would basically update them. So here you can see that when I press Control S, uh, I, have, I tried to save it, but it is giving some errors. And the reason is that we have not imported use state here in this file. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to go to this first line, which is essentially React. I put a comma here. And then I write here curly braces and inside these curly braces, I'm going to write here use state. Okay. So uh, you can see that we have imported it. And when we press control S, it still gives an error, which means that here um, I forgot a, an important convention of React that the functions uh, first letter, it has to be uppercase. So I cannot give here create student with a small or lowercase c. 
I need to put here a capital uh, name, okay? And this is not something like related to the create student component. And in order to avoid confusion, uh, let's say even if I name it as create, then still it's fine, right? So the main thing is that the first letter of it has to be uppercase, okay? And that's what it says here in the, you know, error. So uh, if I control S here, now you can see that we do not have any errors. Okay, so now what we will do, we'll basically bind the values uh, with each of the text field. So for that, what I'm gonna do is that, um, basically these are the values, right, which we're gonna bind. Um, what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna go to the file uh, down here, and in here, what I'm going to do is that right after the uh, variants, I'm going to write here value. So for the first text field, let's just go right here and let's write here value equals. And then uh, in order to bind, I'm just going to write here student dot registration number. Okay. R E G number. So in case you're wondering what this student is, um, this student is the object here that we have created, okay? And this registration number is here. And similarly, we're gonna do that for student name, grade, and section. So uh, we'll just quickly do that. Um, I'm just gonna copy this, and um, I'm just going to go here, and I'm gonna paste it. And here, instead of registration number, I would have here student name, okay? And then uh, I come to the text field, the third one, and I paste it right here. And uh, let me just put a slash here. Let me just remove slash from here. And instead of student.registration number, um, I'm gonna have here student.grade, okay? And the similar thing I do for the third one okay so I'll just simply paste it here and instead of registration number I'm gonna write here section okay so once you do that um, now what I'm gonna do is that I'm going to um, write here an on change event like for example uh, in case of any change uh, we're gonna have here the event which would make those changes for us and we need to write it for each text field So what I'm gonna do is that I am going to go here and uh, Here I'm gonna write here on change Okay on change and Then I'm gonna write here an equal sign and Then I'm gonna write here a like something like this event okay and once I have written here the event and now I'm gonna basically make it a callback function and I have here the curly braces again I hit enter and here I'm gonna write here set student I have here the parentheses and then I have the curly braces and inside these curly braces, what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna put here three dots, okay? And then I'm gonna write here student, okay? This is the object that we are using here. And then I write here student, uh, first field is registration number. So I will just write here stu uh, registration number. And then I will write here event dot target dot value okay so now um, we are kind of done here but before that we just need to type in here instead of double course we need to write here a column okay so uh, now we are pretty much done with the uh, first thing okay first event that we have done in the first text field and now we need to do uh, the same on change uh, thing or on change callback function uh, we need to use for other text fields as well so I'll just simply copy uh, this callback function that I have written here okay I'll press ctrl C 
and I'm just simply gonna go here and I'm gonna paste it right here so once I paste it I need to make one change here uh, which is that instead of registration number uh, I'm gonna give here student name okay and that's it and that is the same thing that I need to do for all the uh, other fields so we have two remaining fields I'll just simply come here and uh, I'll paste it control V and instead of here uh, I'm gonna write here um, the third one which is essentially great okay and um, similarly I'm just gonna go to the fourth text field I am going to um, you know control V here and I'm going to basically give here instead of registration number I'm going to give section here okay so once I write the section here um, now what I'm, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to um, go to the button and I'm also going to create an on click event for the button so in case if you're wondering what an on click event is the thing is that uh, whenever you would click on the button or whenever you would click on the text view this on click event is fired and um, whatever function we have performed on it it would get performed so here uh, I write here on click and then I would write here an equal sign I'll put in brackets here and here I would call create student so in case you're wondering that what this create student is that is the function um, that we're gonna create okay so here you can see that it's giving us some kind of error okay so what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna go up here and I'm going to create a function so what I'm gonna do is that uh, I'm going to write here constant and then I'm gonna write here create student okay and um, then I'm gonna write here an equal sign bracket so I write here an arrow sign and then what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna have uh, curly braces here okay so now we have created the function and you can see the error is gone right so the thing is that now we want to send the data uh, whenever the on click event happens like uh, for example when the user or the client clicks on the uh, create button so what's gonna happen is that uh, the event is gonna be triggered and we wanna send some data to the backend so in order to send some data uh, from the front end to the backend you use a library called as Exios okay so first of all we have to install Exios on our terminal um, so what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna press control C and come out of it here uh, I'll press Y and here I'll try to install Exios and then I would import Exios in our create student.js file and then after importing it I would basically use it okay so now we will write here npm and then we would write here install and then we write here Exios and hyphen hyphen save so now if we hit enter it would start to um, install Exios so uh, we will wait okay so now what we're gonna do that we have installed Axios successfully we're going to start the application uh, so for that we'll just simply write here npm start uh, we would hit enter and now the application would start and in the meantime um, let's just go ahead and let's import Axios so I'll go on to the top right here um, and here you can see that application is starting let it start in the background so now what we're gonna do is that we're gonna import Axios here by writing import Axios and from and then we're gonna write here Axios okay so uh, once we do that um, now what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna put a semicolon here and uh, now what I'm gonna do is that I'm going to go ahead and inside the create student function that I just created so now we will use Axios inside uh, the create student function. So we'll write here Axios dot, and then we're gonna write here post. Uh, we're gonna write here brackets, single quotes. In here we're gonna write the path just in a while. We'll put a comma here first, and then we write here student. 
Okay, so uh, here uh, what I'm gonna do is that in these columns I'm gonna give a path. So I'll just simply write here HTTP and then I would write here localhost, okay? And then I'm gonna write here uh, colon and then I'm gonna write here 5000 and then I write here slash students, okay? So once I do that, now basically the thing is that here you can see that here our application is running. So here you can see that we have a uh, 5,000, okay? So once we have 5,000, um, now what I'm gonna do, is, this 5,000, basically let me explain to you what it is. So whenever the user or client would hit on the create button, this event will be fired, okay? So the thing is that the client side is running on 3,000 port in our system, and uh, the server side, we did that on 5,000 port. So it means that from the front end, the data is now gonna go to the server or to the back end. So here you can see that we also have slash students. And the reason we have here slash students is that it is an entity of the back end. So let me explain to you that what this slash students does and where does it come from. So uh, let me just close the client side for a while. And here, if I go into the server side and if I go to the index.js, here you can see that the slash students, it comes from here and it further comes from the student routes, which means that it comes from the routes folder, okay? And here we have student.js and if we go here in the post, we have create student uh, function. And further, this create student function comes from the controllers, uh, student.js. If I go here, here you can see that I have create student function right here in the backend. So what happens is that when the users or the client sends the request from the front end, it comes to the backend using that port 5000 and slash students, and it traces that all the way back to this function, create student. It basically uh, sends the data at request or, or data as the request. And here, this request body, whatever data the client is sending is assigned to the student. And once it is assigned to the student, now we are basically using it and we are saving it inside the database. So the idea is that from the React, uh, the request comes in the form of JSON, it goes to the node in the form of JSON, and then it is being saved in the database as the JSON file. So there is no conversion, there is no alternatives involved. So the thing is that data comes as it is, it gets processed as it is, and then it is stored into the database as it is, okay? So you can see that how efficient and how smart this MERN stack work is. All right, so now what we're gonna do is that uh, we are going to go to our models schema, and here you can see that uh, we have given some of the names. So the idea is that I have given different names when I was working with the client. Um, so what I'm gonna do is that we do not need this subjects column here, okay, line. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna change this registration number, name, grade, and the section to exactly the names that I have given in my front end, okay? And if I go to the client, and if I go to this here, create student.js, here you can see that I've given the names like, um, if I go here, uh, registration number, student name, grade, and section. So I need to give these exact same names uh, on the server side as well, okay? So I'll just go here in the models, and here, uh, instead of registration number, I'm gonna type in here, regist, uh, R-E-G-N-O, okay, and without a dot. Um, and then I'm gonna here come here, and I'm gonna type in here, uh, the student name okay student name and uh, here the grade in the section remains the same okay so once we have done that now the data will be stored in the back end with ease so now basically save it and uh, now if we go to our application here and now if we let's say uh, add something like let's say registration number one name is Bob and the grade is let's say 5a or 5th and the section is just you know put random number sh or whatever 
So now if I click on create, so you can see nothing happens. The, the table is not changing because we have not made any changes yet. But if I go here to another tab and if I write here localhost colon 5000 slash students, if I hit enter, so here you can see that we have got an error here uh, which says student is not defined and the reason behind that is that if we go to our visual studio code and if we go to our controllers first okay here you can see that we have not defined uh, we have called the student here uh, the student function uh, but if we go on to the top we have not imported anything right so we need to we need to import that function uh, right here so that it could work. So what we're going to do is that we're going to go to our routes student.js and we're going to copy this line which says uh, import student. Okay. So we press control C. We come back to the controller student.js and here on the very first line we uh, you know basically import the student. Okay. From model slash student.js. So now if we control S it and now if we come here in the react app and let's say if we want to so inside this app um, let's say if I have this data and if I click on create so um, now what I'm going to do is that if I come here if I reload it okay so one more thing that you need to do is that uh, you need to make it like something like this student data I'll change the name of this because of the convention okay so i'll just uh, replace this student with student data in these three places um, in the second place here and i will also replace it uh, onto the third place where uh, here we have this student so i'll replace it as student uh, data okay so once you have done that uh, press ctrl s uh, save your files Go here, uh, go to React, uh, this here, uh, the main page of your React app. And uh, here, what you're going to do is that you're going to add some of the random data. So just right here, one uh, name could be Bob, uh, grade could be sixth, and the section could be anything. Okay. So um, when I will hit create button, and now if I would go to localhost 500 slash student, um, you can see that here we have the data. The registration number is one. The student name is Bob. Uh, grade is sixth, right? And the section is anything. But the thing is that is not very attractive way to actually take a look at the data, right? We have the data here, but somehow, now we need to fetch it in this table okay so that's what we're gonna do so now let's go to uh, our visual studio code and here let's go to the file uh, where we want to go uh, in the show student component we have show student dot uh, js so here what i'm gonna do is that just right here uh, under the use styles uh, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to create here a constant, okay? Because now we want the list of these students, right? So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to have here big brackets and I'm going to write here students uh, and then I'm going to write here list, okay? I put a comma here and then I write here set student uh, list, okay? So once we have that now, now we put an equal sign here and then we write here use state. Okay. Uh, and then we write here brackets and then we write here big brackets inside of them. All right. So once you are done doing so, what you're going to do is that you're going to write here use effect. Um, this is a method that I'm going to use here. It's not actually a method, but it's a react hook. Okay. And I'll tell you shortly that why do we use this react hook, okay? So let me just uh, create an arrow here and then I'm going to write here something like this. And in here, uh, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to use this set uh, student list 
but before that uh, I'm gonna write here exios uh, dot get and then I'm gonna have here brackets and inside these brackets um, I'm gonna have a link in the similar way that we had for the post we're gonna have it now this time for the get so we'll just write here localhost and then we'd write here colon and then we write here 5000 and then we'd write here slash students okay so once we do that uh, then we're gonna write here dot then and after that we're gonna write here brackets and inside these brackets I'm gonna type in here all students okay so all student basically is the variable that is responsible for storing all the data about students and then we use it it basically gets and prints all the data about all the students okay so now what we're gonna do is um, that we're gonna come here um, create an arrow sign something like this and then we write another uh, function body in which we write simply set and then we write here students list okay so after writing it set student list inside the parenthesis you write here all students and then you write here dot data okay and then you write here a semicolon so basically um, you you get it all done so till here we are done but uh, we need to do two small changes uh, one change that we need to do is that we need to put a comma here and then we need to write here empty brackets so these big brackets and this comma is basically is the syntax of hook so uh, here we you can see that we have put a comma and double bracket so this is just a syntax of react hook okay so one more thing that you need to do is that we have written here axios so we need to import it right and we have already imported it here uh, import axios from axios okay so that is very fine if you have not imported it make sure that you have imported axios already one more thing that you could do is that uh, you can come here and here you can see that we have the name of the like if we scroll down here the name of the function is basic table of course it doesn't make any sense so uh, what I want to do that I want to give a meaningful name and I could give this name like anything okay so I could say show students or show student and the one thing that I need to do is that following the convention I need to uh, keep the first letter uh, capital or the uppercase one more thing uh, if you are wondering about uh, use effect then the thing is that uh, this use effect is a react hook which basically calls itself whenever the page reloads or refreshes or loads okay so whenever the page is gonna load this use effect hook is going to call itself and whatever you have inside of it that is going to be executed and um, one more thing that you need to do uh, you can see that it's going to it's, it's going to give you an error because we have not imported use state and uh, we also need to import use effect so what we're gonna do here we have use effect but we do not have use state so just put a comma right here and here you are going to write here use state okay so once you have written down here press control s and now you can see that we do not have any errors so um, now you can see here um, we have this get here uh, previously we had post so this get URL uh, here you can see that we have students right so basically get is used to fetch the data from the database right and this students here uh, if we go back to here in the index.js here you can see that we have students right and here we have student routes so if we go to the routes and uh, here we see student.js here you can see that we have get and this is get students so now what we need to do is that uh, we need to go to the controller student.js 
and here if we scroll up here we have get students okay so here you can see that we have the request all right and uh, when the user or the client sends the request to fetch the data uh, then it finds that data okay and it waits for it and when it finds that data so what it does that basically uh, it returns as a response that it is okay and it sends all the data of the, all the students in the form uh, format of json okay if it doesn't happen for some reason uh, it's going to print out an error or it's going to send the error message so um, now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to go to the components in, in the uh, show student.js and here you can see that we were here. Okay. So this is the address and the URL where we are getting the data. So uh, once we have done it like this, get data, um, let me show you in the create student.js. So here we had the post statement in which we just had to send the data, okay? So you can see that we do not have any promise function here. But in the case of get, here we have this uh, URL, which is essentially localhost colon 5000 slash students. And after that, because this is a get student or get function, where we are getting the students, um, in that case, we're gonna have a promise function. Uh, which essentially starts from then and then we have all students and after that we set all the students data that we get into set student list which is essentially uh, here okay so once it's set here uh, it, it goes further into performing other steps so now what we're gonna do is that uh, we have uh, basically set student list okay all the data is stored in here so what we're gonna do is that we are going to remove all the dummy data here you can see so we'll just basically remove this function and we will also remove these rows okay so let me just uh, press backspace and I have deleted all that dummy data so now what I'm gonna do is that I'm just simply going to name the table cells and I'm gonna change those names so first of all, I'm going to give it a name, okay, and uh, then I'm going to change this calories to like uh, registration number, okay. So I just write here RE number, all right. So now what I'm going to do is that the next uh, here, I'm going to change it to like uh great and then the next one i'm gonna change it to the section and then finally i am just simply going to delete the last one okay so once i have done it now what i'm gonna do is that i'm going to move below and here i see this uh student uh the, the map here i have rows dot map right so what I'm gonna do is that I'm going to change it to students list okay because I don't want to I don't want here rows I want here students list okay so I have student list dot map and then I'm gonna change the arguments uh, not just row but I'm gonna have here student and then put comma and then I'm gonna have here a key so now um, down here uh, we have the key and here instead of row dot name I'm gonna type in key okay so once I do that now I am going to go below like this and here instead of row dot name I am going to type in here student dot student name okay so once I've done that, now uh, instead of the row dot calories, I'm going to uh, type in here student dot registration number. And then uh, on the second place, I'm going to type in here student dot grade. And on the third place, I'm gonna write here student dot 
section okay so now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to remove this last line because we really don't need it so now let's save it and uh, let's go to our here and uh, you can see that in our application uh, we do see one line uh, the title name uh, registration number uh, grade and section okay so there there you go you can see that uh, we have taken the data in this order first registration number then name then grade and then section but here we are presenting the data first name and then registration number the reason for that is that if you go back to code here uh, and here you can see that first we have the student name right here okay so if we uh, for some reason if we just put this uh, registration number here and name here then in that case we'll have registration number first and the name name will have afterwards okay so it's as simple as that so um, here let's just add another uh, data and let's see what happens so here let's say registration number two name is John the grade is let's say seventh and section is let's say something if we just create it here you can see that it has not uh, added the data here but if we refresh now we can see here two data uh, so the thing is that why can't we uh, see here uh, the second data automatically like whenever we cre uh, I create the button I click the create button it should immediately show me the data instead of me having to reload the page right so what we really want to do is that we want to auto reload it. So let me just add another data quickly, like three, and then I write here uh, Yale, and I write here grade fifth, and write here section C, and if I create it, here you can see that still, uh, I don't see the value being added here directly. I have to reload the page and then I'll be able to see this value. So I wanna make it auto reload or auto refresh so that whenever I would add the data in here, it would automatically reload this uh, part of the page and would show me uh, the new entry in the table, okay? So for that, what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna go to my Visual Studio Code and I'm gonna to go to my student, uh, create student.js. So here what I'm gonna do is that I'm going to uh, create um, a dot then uh, here, okay? So once we post the data, right after that, I create a then block or then method. And in here, uh, what I do that I like right here an arrow sign and then uh, I write something inside of the body of this function. I write here window dot location dot reload and then I write here false, okay? So what this line does is that uh, whenever I would put in the data, I would post it, it would basically uh, automatically reload or refresh uh, the page. Or, so now what I'm gonna do is that now uh, we are done here let me just save it press control s and it would be saved go to your browser and let's try to do that okay so now I'm going to put here another entry so I'll just write here grant and the grade is gonna be let's say uh, first and let's say the section is gonna be blue all right so now if we hit the create button here you can see that now it has automatically uh, reloaded the page and the data has been added and i could see it right away okay so i'll give you another example uh, five uh, name is tony grade is uh, whatever and the section is whatever okay so now if i create it there you go you can see that it has automatically refreshed it and now here i can see the data so here you can see that we have a lot of data in here uh, but what if we want to delete it so let's say if we want to have a delete button here so what we are going to need for that we're going to need an extra column and of course we need some sort of button on which we can perform action okay so for that and then after that of course we're going to have an on click event for that button and uh, on that on click event we're gonna delete 
that specific row okay so what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna go to my Visual Studio code so now what I would do I would come to my um, this show student file and I am going to basically have the title of the uh, table so I'm just gonna simply copy it let me just paste it and here instead of the section I'm gonna have here action okay so now if I basically save it if I basically go here here you can see that I have uh, one action column but here um, I do not have any row that is uh, going right here okay so what I'm gonna do is that now I'm going to go to the uh, next here where we have the table body and in here uh, I'm just simply going to copy it okay and um, I'm just going to paste it right here I'm going to remove this student section and of course I'm gonna have here an icon or a button on which I am going to uh, have a function on which basically it would delete that data so the idea is that here I am going to install or I'm going to use the table icon so what I can do is that I can uh, download and install the material icon so for that what I'm gonna do uh, first of all I'm gonna need to install it so I'll come here press control C um, I would terminate the job and here I'm gonna write here npm uh, and then I'm gonna write here install and then I'm going to write here at material UI slash icons okay so now um, I will hit enter and it would start to install those icons material UI icons so once I have that icon I'm gonna use that icon right here between these uh, this tab table cell and that's where uh, will begin to have that icon button and then of course we're gonna have a function on the click event or on the back of that uh, icon um, and then we're gonna move forward from there so we'll wait here um, so that it could install this material UI icons so in the meantime when it is installing it what we can do is that we can go to our favorite browser and we can uh, go here uh, to materialui.com uh, and in here we have the we have to scroll down this thing here and look for something like here okay so and then you are going to scroll down here and here you can see that we have different sorts of the icon button okay so this one here is the delete icon button okay uh, we just need to copy this all right and uh, now what we would do uh, you remember that this is the sizes section uh, in the button uh, column or, or in the button section or on the button page you can say and uh, after copying this thing here I'd go to my Visual Studio code and right in here I'll paste it okay so I cannot use it right now because it has not installed uh, this material UI icons but once it is installed then I can use it so when it is installing while it is installing kind of so what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna continue to code so I that so that I could complete the code and we do not waste any time so once you have done that okay once you have copy pasted this thing here now what you're gonna do is that you're gonna go on to the top and here you are going to uh, basically include a, a material UI icons okay so now you would come on the top of the file um, and in here you are going to import two of the components so first I'm going to import icon button okay I name it icon button and then uh, I'm going to write here from and then uh, I'm going to write here at the rate of material hyphen UI and then slash core slash icon button okay so this is what 
uh, this is the icon button component that we are importing and now we also import the delete icon okay so we write here delete icon from and then we write here add material and then we write here ui and instead of core i write here icons slash delete okay so once we do that now we are going to write here uh, a semicolon okay so once we do that now let's just press control s and let's go to our browser here and uh, let's go to our react app um, let me just refresh it quickly and here you would be able to see uh, some of the icons so I forgot to run my app that's why it is giving an error so make sure that when you are uh, installing something um, so make sure that first you run your app so for that you would just simply write here npm start and uh, when you would hit enter it would automatically start to run your app and it would automatically open the app page in your uh, browser okay so now i do not need to put any sort of local host colon port number uh, it would automatically take me to the web page where i could see the output all right so here you can see that uh, our app is running on the local host 3000 and here you can see that we have the delete icon right here but if i click it right now you can see that it is not doing anything because i do not have any of the event click uh, option or on click button on the back end of it or you can say in the code right so what i'm going to do is that i'm going to go to my visual studio okay and um, I am going to go to my show student dot js file. Okay, I'm going to make sure that I'm inside of it. What I'm going to do is that I am going to have a uh, on click event in the icon button. Okay, so uh, here um, I'm going to have an on click. So I'll just simply write here on click, and then I would write here an equal sign. I'll have here the curly braces. And then I would have here parenthesis, I have here an arrow sign, something like this. And then I'm going to write here a function delete student. So the idea is that I haven't created this delete student function yet. I'm just going to create it, but I'm just putting the click event or on click event in the icon button. Okay. Where I would call this function. So I'll create this function where I would make sure that I delete that specific line. So here I write here delete student and then I write here student dot underscore ID. All right. So once I'm done here, now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to go on top where I have this uh, constant. Okay. So uh, right before the use effect here, I'm going to write that function. Okay. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to write here constant. And then I'm going to write here delete student because that is the name that I've given in the on click event. And then I'm going to write here uh, ID and then I'm going to write here uh, equal sign and then uh, the arrow. OK, so after that, I'm going to have here the the brackets and uh, after brackets, I'm going to have axios here, actually. So I'll just simply write here axios dot delete. And then inside of here, I'm going to have the same URL that I had previously. Uh, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to write here uh, tilde. Okay. The reason I am putting in here tilde instead of single quotes because I want to pass a value through it. So I'll just write here HTTP localhost. And then I would write here colon. And then I write here 5000 port slash students. And also, I'm going to pass the ID, okay, uh, of the click event because each button have a specific ID. So how do we know that what button has been clicked? So whatever icon button has been clicked, that ID gets into the on click event, and we get it right here, and we delete that specific row. If we do not have that ID, it would delete the entire table, and certainly we do not want to do that. So. Uh, we'll just write here a dollar sign and then I'm going to write here uh, curly braces and inside the, those curly braces, I'm going to write ID. 
So once I do that, now I come outside and I write here a then block or then function. And uh, then I'm going to write here uh, like this, an arrow. And then I'm going to write the body of the function. And inside the body of the function, I'm going to do the same thing. Because whenever I want it to delete, it would be deleted. But for that, I have to manually reload the page. So I do not want to do that. I Whenever I would hit the click button or the delete button, excuse me, I want the page to automatically reload and show me that if the deletion of the data was successful or not. So for that, I would do the exact same thing. I would write here in window.location.reload and then I would have brackets and in here, I'm just going to write false. So now I put a semicolon and we are all done here. So I'll press control S. So I have saved it. You can see that we do not have any uh, errors. All right, so we are done at the client side. But if you, had, if you have noticed that we had the post and we had the get functions and uh, we could trace the functions all the way back, okay? So now we have the delete function uh, on the client side. We are done here, but we do not have any delete function on the server side, okay? Initially, we haven't created any delete function there. So we need to create it. So for that, what we would do that first of all, uh, we would go to the routes folder, okay, in the student.js and in here, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to write here router and then I'm going to write here dot delete and uh, then I'm going to have here the brackets, the parentheses and inside the parentheses, I'm going to have quotes and then I'm going to have here slash colon and then I'm going to have ID here. So after that, I put a comma here and then of course, I uh, have this delete student function, which I haven't created yet, but I'm going to create it, okay? So before I create this function, I of course also need to import it. So instead uh, here, uh, as I have get student and create student, I'm gonna put a comma here and I am gonna read or import this delete student here as well. So remember, we haven't created this delete student function yet. So for that, in order to create it, we're gonna go to our controllers folder and inside the controllers folder, I'm gonna go to the student.js and in here, we have uh, the other functions like async function of get students and the create students. So here we're gonna create an async function of the uh, delete function okay so for that uh, what we would do would just simply write here export quickly constant and then we write here delete uh, student in fact we can just simply copy paste it from above as well uh, let me just copy paste the structure and then I would make some changes to it so I'll just simply copy it and uh, here I would just simply remove this line Okay, and I'll also remove everything we have in the dry block. All right, and I'm also going to remove everything from here. Okay, so this create student, I'll call it delete uh, student. Okay, so I'll just write here delete student. This is a method. And now what I'm gonna do is that in here, I'm gonna have a constant. So let's call it constant ID. And then I have request dot p r p a r a m s parameters dot id. Okay, so once I have that, then I am going to go inside the try block, and I'm gonna write here a wait, and then I'm gonna write here student data, and then I'm gonna write here dot find by id and and remove. Okay. So now uh, I would write here uh, id dot executable function, okay? So not exec, uh, exec, okay? Something like this. So put a semicolon here. Uh, we are done here. And after that, I want to send here a response here which says uh, successfully deleted, okay? Or deleted. You can send any response that you want. So once you have done that now, uh, in case if this try block doesn't work, we want 
um, to show the error and for that we'll just simply write here console dot log and then uh, we would have error here okay so put a semicolon and now we are all done here so let's just press control s save it and uh, once we have saved it uh, before we go to the final run uh, i have made a slight mistake here uh, this was a typo i guess so let me just remove it so now we have it so once we need to do uh, what we need to do is that we also need to remove this bracket from here uh, and now we are all done so let's just press Control s uh, we save it and uh, now what we need to do is that we need to see here and here you can see that the connection is established and running on port 5000 see for this message and then go perform the deletion uh, on your browser so here you can see uh, that the connection is established successfully with the port 5000 so we'll go here uh, let me refresh the app okay so here you can see that we have the data all right so uh, we have four entries and one two four five so let's say if i want to delete the entry number four um, let's say if i delete this icon button here you can see that we have successfully deleted the data okay so if you want to delete another data you can also click on the delete icon and this would be deleted as well i can delete another and finally i could delete this as well so uh now basically you know how to create your uh mern stack application um you know, how to work with react on the front end uh, how to work with the node and express on the back end and how to work with the mongodb right so the biggest advantage that i've told you in this video multiple times is that you basically have to send the data from the front end to the back end and to the database finally in one format which is essentially json Similarly, if you have to fetch the data, like from the database to the back end to the front end, you have to do it uh, using in the same format, which is JSON. So that's why usually Mern stack applications are really, really fast. And uh, that's why people uh, really like to develop applications in Mern stack. And uh, the Mern stack developers are really high in demand. So the thing is that in this uh, video tutorial, we barely have scratched the surface. Uh, and uh, this was a simple basic application. If you're just getting started, this tutorial is a must for you. And I hope you have enjoyed it. You have loved it. And uh, if you have any questions, you can ask us in the comments below and uh, we'll try to respond to you as soon as possible. And if you're not subscribed to our channel, uh, please do so uh, click the red button subscribe to our channel hit the bell icon so that you get the notifications to our latest videos and uh, click the like button if you really liked it so thanks for watching and do not forget to subscribe to our channel to get the latest videos to help you advance your it career